Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. Welcome back to my channel. A couple weeks ago, I posted up a video about lunar processing. And one of my YouTube subscribers named Nancy Rickliano, and I hope I got that name right. Nancy, if I mispronounced it, I apologize. But she sent me a message asking me if I had ever heard of or tried AstroSurface. And I'd honestly never had heard of it, but I promised her I would take a look. And man, I'm kind of glad that I did. What I want to do in this video is just walk you through how I processed um, a picture of Jupiter, Saturn, and the surface of the moon using just simply one program, AstroSurface. Basically what it does is it takes all of the things that we would do in AutoStackard, Registax, and Photoshop and puts it into one very simple, easy to use package. Stick around. I want to let you take a look at this. Okay, so if you want to try this out, you'll want to go to astrosurface.com, and here you can see this is where you download the software. Actually, let me change this over to English for you. Um, if you click up here, you can change this to English. And uh, so here's where you can download the software. Uh, there's some manuals, some video tutorials right here, and uh, so you can kind of check that out and... Um, uh, this is where you would get the software. Now, I do want to know, want you to notice this is not a secure website. So if you're uncomfortable with that, maybe you, you don't want to download it. I didn't have any problems with it. Everything worked fine. Let's go over and let me show you real quick how we process a video with or a, a picture with this. First thing we want to do when you open up AstroSurface, this is what you're going to see. You want to come over here and click on Files, and then click here on Open File SCR AVI. Okay, I'm assuming here that you have um, that you have saved your videos in either SCR or AVI files. That's how we all do our capture. So I'm hoping that you know that. Uh, if you don't, watch one of my other earlier videos on lunar uh, and planetary imaging, and I walk through all of that. But basically, what you do is once you've got that, I'm going to go over here to Jupiter, and I'm going to open up. This is my SCR file. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up. When I double click on it, it's going to open this box up. I want to double check to make sure it's got the correct bear pattern selected. And then I'm going to go over here to analyze and register. And I'm going to click on register. That's going to open up this box. And here I will call your attention to these little yellow numbers. This basically gives you the sequence in which you want to use those. So the very first thing we want to do is sort of analyze our target. If you think about how we would do this in AutoStacker, this is that, you know, where we would analyze our frames so we can get a quality graph. Very first thing you want to do, because we're using a disk or planet, click on detect. It's going to draw this little pink box around here. Once we collect this, uh, um, click on detect, it'll make this pink box. Double click now on the planet with our left mouse button, and that's going to make this green box appear around it. From there, then we want to go down to the analyze section. And the first thing I want to do is I want to turn this on. I'm going to go ahead and check this graph auto open. That way, when it's finished, it will automatically open the quality graph for me. Then I can click on analyze. And what this is doing, you can see down here, it tracks the progress. It basically goes through each frame of the video, and it's going to then give me a uh, quality graph to show me from uh, my best uh, images and my worst images. And so it's running through that process right now. I find that timetable-wise, it takes about the same amount of time as AutoStacker on this. Once I do, I get this graph. Now I can use to select my... Uh, frames that I want to stack, I can just kind of slide, use these sliders if I want to. And so basically what I'm doing, I'm going to set this about right here, and I'm going to stack the best 48.57% of my frames, which would be 1,457. Click on OK. You'll notice that changed these numbers down here to the percentage and the number of frames. I also could do this if I wanted to click on half stack here. This will then give me two stacks, one with 24% uh, of the frames um, and the other with 46. But for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that unclicked. Now I'm going to go up here 
And because I am doing a planetary image, I want to use the multi points um, alignment mode. And I, I'm leaving all of this at the, um, uh, uh, the stacking method. I'm not touching that at all. Then I'm going to go come in down here. And normally what you'll have is this will be set at 48 pixels. That'll be the tile size. So you know how on Registat or on Auto Stacker, when you set your alignment points, you can set the size of the boxes. Same concept here. I'm going to leave that at 48. Click on Set. That's going to draw all my alignment points into, into the planet for me. Then I'm going to simply come down here and click on Stack. Now, one change that I did make is I changed the output method to TIFF. I wanted to change, save it as a TIFF file. I think the default is PNG. So I changed that. Click on Stack. You can see it's going to run through the process. Again, it takes a couple of minutes. And when it's done, it's going to give me my stacked image. And I'm leaving this in real time. You can fast forward this if you need to. Here it is. This is the stacked image, a preview. Now I want to edit this, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Edit. And then I'm going to go ahead and close this button. Click on Close. This is my stacked picture of Jupiter. So now what I want to do is I want to adjust the wavelets. Now normally, the way I would do this, now I close Auto Stacker, open up Registax, and that's where I would do my wavelet adjustments. In, Auto, in Astro Surface, we just click here on this little box here, Wavelets, and it's going to open up an adjustment box. Now there is a lot of information here, and honestly, I haven't really played with this enough to know what everything on here does. But let me draw your attention to a couple things. First of all, I'm going to adjust my noise pre-filter up just a little bit to knock down any noise as I sharpen it. The second thing I want you to notice is Wavelets HF and Wavelets LF. LF refers to the largest features on the planet, HF to the smallest. And when I drag these sliders up, you'll notice what happens. Let me just show that. This was the beginning. Now I slide this up. And notice it start and starts to sharpen the image. Now, because these are a little bit dim, I didn't have my gain set quite enough on the capture. I'm going to pull this gain up and brighten the image up. All right away, we can see. Let's look at the preview. Let me turn the preview off, on. That's what's happening, okay? So we're sharpening up all of the details. Um, and then let me let me go a little bit further. I can come over here to Wavelets LF. I can sharpen some of the bigger features on the planet. Okay. If I find that things start to get a little bit noisy, I can bring up the noise adjustments. I can also go over here if I wanted to make a little bit of uh, RGB adjustments on the color balance. I could come over here and play with this. I really haven't done that on this picture. I'm not going to do it on this picture. But you can see that sharpened it up pretty easy, and that's quick. Think about what we've just done. We've taken the process that we would normally do in two programs, Registax and Auto Stacker. We've done it in one. Now I can go and press OK on here. If I wanted to make other adjustments on this particular picture, if I wanted to crop it, if I wanted to adjust the levels a little bit, if I wanted to change the high dynamic range on it, I can do all of that right here, which would be the same things that I would normally do in Photoshop. Now, in general, I'm pretty happy with that image. So what I would do is I'd go over to Files, and I would go ahead and save it. By the way, you can save it either as a TIFF or as a PNG file, whichever one you want. And that's as simple as it is. Okay, now let me go ahead and close this. And let's do one, see how it does on Saturn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Files. I'm going to do the same thing, Open File, SCR. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab Saturn. Go ahead and double click on it. It's opened my Saturn file up. Got the correct bear pattern. Now on my Analyze and Register, I'm going to go ahead and register that. Click Detect. It's drawn my pink box. Double click on the planet. Now I'm going to come down here and make sure I've clicked on Graph Auto Open. Click on Analyze. I'm going to pause this while it analyzes. Okay, it took a couple of minutes there, and now I have my graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this up a little bit. I'm going to move this over to about here. 
and I'm going to select about a little over 70% of the frames to stack. Click on OK. It's changed my number down here. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on Set. Draws all my alignment points for me. Stack. Take a couple of seconds. I'll pause it while it does it. Okay there, it took about two minutes or so for it to run through the process. This is my stacked image. I'm going to click on Edit. Yes. Close this. Now here I am. I'm ready to do some adjustments. I go to Wavelets. Um, now you'll notice it's carried over all of the settings that I just used on Jupiter. And quite frankly, it was perfect. I mean, it set it up very nice. This is sharpened very nice. If I wanted to, I could I could try to sharpen that up a little bit more. Uh, if I go too far on this, I'm going to get too much noise, but I can always draw up my noise reduction just a tad bit. And you can see right away it sharpens it very easy. I basically just need to adjust the noise pre-filter and these two wavelet adjustments, and I get... To be very frank with you, this was a lot easier for me than Registax. I know the Wavelet feature in Registax has seven different layers and probably gives a little more control, but I found this to be really simple, easy, and I think, honestly, for me, it gave me better results. Now, you can evaluate that for yourself, and you can see. Uh, I could do uh, more adjustments in this, but when I'm done, I'm just going to go back over. Let me crop this. Let me show you how you crop this. It's very simple. I just left click on my mouse, draw out my box, click on crop. Then I just go over here when it opens this little dialog box, hit crop again. OK, there's my cropped image. If I wanted to resize it, I could go over here and I could uh, adjust. Let's say I wanted to make it a little bit bigger. I could come here and put 1.75 times. That would make it 1,006 by 735. Let me just show you that. Click on resize. There it is, my resized image. Um, Again, there's a lot of features on here that I'm not showing just simply because I haven't had a chance to play around with them yet. But I could do a lot more with this picture, apparently, than I really am doing. Um, this program has a lot of power in it. Okay, so when I got done with that, I go ahead and save it and save it as a PNG file or a TIFF, whichever one I wanted to do. If I wanted to take it to Photoshop and do some further adjusting, I would go to TIFF. If not, to be honest with you, uh, it's got enough tools that I might do everything in this one program. Just save it as a PNG, post it on Facebook, and call it Fab. Okay, let me go ahead and close this one. Let's see how it does on a lunar image. Once again, we go to Open File. Let me go ahead to Auto Surface Test. Let me go to Moon. I'm going to open up this video file right here. Click on Open. Whoops. Okay, so now we've got our box. I'm going to use this as a monochrome. I'm going to go to Analyze and Register. By the way, Nancy, if you're watching, this is the very same picture that I did a couple weeks ago uh, with the uh, lunar imaging video. So we'll get to test it right here. Okay, so we go to Register. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this number one selection. I'm going to go to Star Surface ROI. I'm going to click on that because I'm doing a surface feature. Uh, now what I want to do is come over here into this side, and I want to draw a box. I'm just going to drag my mouse while I hold down the left button. That's going to draw a box here. By the way, if you're not sure what to do in this, they give you instructions right here. So let me, let me, I'll, I'll just show that to you again, okay? So if I go over here and I go to Analyze and Register, okay, and I go to Select, notice what happens. It gives me the, the next instructions, okay? So draw a contrasted surface uh, ROI. So I'm going to just draw that out with my mouse, holding down the left click button, left uh, button. Now that I have that, I'm going to press Graph, Auto Open, Analyze. It's going to analyze my data. Take a couple of seconds, and it will give me the graph. We'll just wait and hear for just a second while it does it.
Okay, so once again, I can use my sliders here to select the number of frames that I want to use. I've got that set right around 30%. Probably could go a little bit higher than that. Let's go all the way out here to about 40%, a little 41%. Click OK. I'm going to go ahead. Because this is a lunar feature, um, I'm going to go ahead and go with a little bit larger um, tile size. Now, if you think about that in Auto Stacker, you know how we get our alignment boxes. A lot of times when I'm doing lunar pictures, I'll do a little bit bigger alignment boxes, and it seems to come out better. Okay, so I, I can actually take that out even a little bit larger, maybe to 72, click on set. Now I'm going to come down here and click on stack, and it's going to go through and it's going to stack my image. What I would urge you to do, and I haven't really done a lot of this yet to figure out what the optimal tile size for each of these images are, but I would probably do this several times um, and, and just figure out which one works better for the data. A lot of times when I'm doing auto stackered and register stacks, I'll do quite a few different stacks with auto stackered with different alignment point sizes just to figure out what works best for my data. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do that, but you, you could do it and figure out what works best. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and click on edit. Close this, yes. Click on the X, close it out. Okay, so here's my stacked image. Now let's go to wavelets. Now, you'll notice this is bringing over the same settings that I just had for Saturn, which are way too much for this image. So I'm going to click on Reset, put everything back to square one. And the first thing I'm going to do is draw up my noise pre-filter just a little bit. Okay. Now, um, what I'll do here is I'm going to draw up this side of the graph and sharpen some of those bigger features a little bit. Okay. Now, if I wanted to increase the strength of this a little bit, uh, I could draw this up. Now, if you think about this, in Registax, you know how in the separate weight layers, you'll have, you'll have the slider, which you can slide up each layer and, and do more sharpening on that layer. But then you also have an adjustment for noise reduction and strength. Okay, that's what this is. This is kind of a multiplier to bring out some more um, so let, we'll just let me show you what we've done. This is a preview if I turn it off. So we've done just a little bit of sharpening. I'm going to go gather, bring the gain up just a little bit so you can see this and make it a little bit brighter. Okay, so there we go. So, so far, that's what we've got done. Let's go ahead and now for this, if I draw this up at any at all with the strength set all up, it over sharpens. It really brings out too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock the strength down a little bit. I'm going to turn this multiplier down. And then I'm going to draw up this way, uh, uh, the smaller features and sharpen them. And look what happens. Man, that is coming out really. Look at these features around Play-Doh. I can see this little wrinkle ridge going down through here. Nice detail in the Vallis Alpus. Um, the, the craters up in here along the northern part of the moon. Really coming out really nice. Okay, so again, you don't want to over sharpen lunar pictures, so you want to be careful not to do that. Um, but you play around here till you get it to just where you want it to be. I'm pretty happy with it right there. Click on OK. Once again, I want to crop this a little bit, so I'm just going to draw out my box. Click on Crop. Crop. OK. And there we go. That's how easy it is. Okay, so let's go and let me show you. Let me just <clears throat> make this a little bit smaller. And <clears throat> let me show you these three images <clears throat> really quick that we just did. I'm sorry for this taking so long. I should have had this set up uh, here. Okay, let me just show these to you real quick. Actual surface test. Here was our picture of Jupiter. Okay. This is actually the PNG file. Let me slide that over. Okay. That's our picture of Jupiter. This is our lunar picture. Okay. This is our picture of Saturn right there. Now, I got to tell you, 
that overall, I'm pretty happy with those pictures. <laughs> okay, that is really quick processing, very, very simple in one single program. Okay, now again, I could take these over in Photoshop, I could probably do some more work on them, but frankly, that's as good as a, of a processing as I've ever done on planetary and lunar images with a really simple, um, easy program to use. Okay, so let's go over and let's think about what I liked and what I didn't like about this particular program. Let me give you a little bit of an evaluation of it. Okay, so let me take a moment here to try to evaluate a little bit of Astro Surface for you. Let me start by telling you the things that I like about it. The things I like about it is that it combines everything that I would need to do good um, processing of planetary and lunar images in one package. Rather than going between three different software packages, AutoStacker, Registax, and Photoshop, I can do it all in one program. That is a game changer for me. I'll tell you what, it was so simple once you figure out how it's laid out and what you need to do. After I practiced with it a couple of times, it was just like an old hand. Now, I will warn you, the first time that you try this, it's going to feel a little bit awkward. If you're used to and you've been invested in using those other programs, it's going to feel a little strange to you at first, and it did for me. Um, but once I got the hang of it, I really appreciated having all of the tools for the processing in one package. In fact, I'll be honest with you, I probably wouldn't even bother taking the images that I captured there. I probably wouldn't even take them to Photoshop and do much more with them. Uh, maybe I would, but, but probably wouldn't. Especially if you're starting out, this is a great program to start out with simply because Everything's right there that you need. And I am certain that I have not tapped in to all of the power of it. The thing I've realized, and this would be the second positive that I mentioned, is this is a very powerful program. It has a lot of tools. There are a lot of sharpening features. There are a lot of noise reduction features, uh, things to adjust the color channels that I didn't even get into um, and haven't even experimented enough with yet. So there's a lot of room for this program to do a lot more um, and, and much, much better quality processing that I showed you today. It is it's a powerful piece of software. The third thing I like about it is it's free. Um, you don't have to pay a dime for this. It's freeware. I always love uh, this fact about the astronomical community. We, we share with one another. We encourage with one another. And this is another example of that. I know whoever developed this must have put hours and hours and hours into it. And I want to commend you. You've done a great job. And making it free is an enormously enormous benefit. Let me talk to you about a couple things that maybe I don't like. The first thing that I think maybe could be improved in this program is the general user interface. Once I got used to it, I didn't have any problem. But it was a bit bewildering when I first looked at it. Maybe it could be just laid out a little simpler and a little easier. Um, I think that maybe having some more pop-up um uh, you know, think so when I hover over something, there's more pop-ups that just kind of tell me what this is and give me a little bit more understanding. Because there are a lot of features in there, I'm still not sure what they were doing. Okay, uh, the documentation, while it's there, the PDF files walked me through the basics, and there and there were some um, YouTube videos that were helpful. You could do a lot more with the documentation. I think uh, having a lot more instructionals and tutorials. Um, I think about something like uh, Astro Pixel Processor, Medulla, has put a lot of, of, of videos. There's a whole forum that's there, and that would be helpful. Um, and maybe those are out there and I just haven't found them, but uh, that would be helpful. The third thing that I, I really was a little bit uncomfortable with is the fact that the website is insecure. It's not a secure website. And um, I went ahead and take the, took the risk and downloaded it, but... Um, 
some people may not be comfortable with that. So I would urge whoever's developing this to maybe put it on a secure website and take a little bit of that. But overall, this is a really good program. I really enjoyed it. I want to encourage you, if you uh, do a lunar or a planetary imaging, check out AstroSurface. You might enjoy it. If you are using AstroSurface and you have a better workflow than what I've demonstrated here, remember this is my first experience with it, so I'm not uh, talented in, 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 in any ways. If you've got a better workflow, hey, put it up in the reply section. I'd love to know how you use it. If you uh, if you want to share a video that you've made, uh, feel free to put the link there in my U in the in, U in the YouTube replies, and so that we kind of share with one another and learn. I'm not saying for sure that this will replace my use of Astros of Autostacker and Registax. But I will say that I'm leaning that direction. This was a really, really good experience, and I like the results. So you check it out. You let me know what you think about it. Love to hear your comments. Love to hear some replies about it. Check it out, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. That's all for this week. Now, if you've not subscribed to my channel, please do that. Click on the subscribe button. Also, I would appreciate it greatly if you would share it with your friends, hit that like button, and just let me know that you're watching and you're enjoying this content. Next week, or maybe the week after, I'm not sure how long it's going to finish this project, I am working on an image of a, a, a little... Um, uh, uh, nebula called the Headphones Nebula. I had never heard of it before, but it is a little planetary nebula. I've got about eight hours worth of data. I'm going to try here later this week. We're supposed to have a couple of really good nights. I'm trying to add a little bit more data and hopefully going to have a pretty good uh, picture of it. And it's a really fascinating little planetary nebula. I'm shooting it with my Celestron 8-inch telescope and so hopefully it will all come out well. So look for that video coming up here in the next Next couple weeks. Thanks for tuning in today. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.